ओम अज्ञानतिमीरांधस्यानाजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मील येना तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति भक्तिवेदातस्वामी नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर In this session, we'll be discussing from the 43rd verse of the 13th chapter of the first canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam. Yatha krido paskarana samyoga vigama viha ichaya kriditu syatam tathai veshe chaya drunam. The meaning of this verse is: As a player sets up and disperses his playthings according to his own sweet will. so the supreme will of the lord brings men together and separates them these are words spoken by narad muni he is explaining to yudhishthira when yudhishthira questioned narad muni that i do not know where my uncles have gone away you are like the captain of the ship so you please guide us to our destination so then narada is first of all explaining the important principles by which this world is working and then he will come to the actual facts about the uncles of yudhishthira both vidura and dhritarashtra as well as gandhari where have they gone that he will tell later but first of all he uh, explains the general principles which is very much helpful for all of us to understand the facts about our existence in this material world so in this verse um lord um, narada is telling the supreme will of the lord brings men together and separates them both are due to the supreme will of the lord but how does it actually work some details are given by shila prabhupad in the purport we must know for certain that the particular position in which we are now set up is an arrangement of the supreme will in terms of our own acts in the past so we have to consider the supreme will of the supreme lord and also our own actions in the past so it is not just the lord alone who decides everything independently there is also the consideration of our own actions in the past what kind of actions our material activities in the past we are held responsible for every action of ours especially as human beings so this we should not forget if we don't act responsibly we'll have to pay the price for irresponsibly acting because we are under the laws of the supreme lord called the laws of karma so every action we are accountable whether the state laws may or may not consider the consequence of every action of ours the state laws work within the framework of some constitutional laws for uh, people who are called citizens of this country but the laws of god are working for every living being and especially the human being is held responsible for every action of his shri la prabhupada further explains 
the supreme lord is present as the localized paramatma in the heart of every living being as it is said in the bhagavad gita in the 13th chapter in the 23rd verse upadrishta anumanta bharta bhokta maheshwaraha paramatmeti chapyukto dehe smin purusha paraha krishna is explaining there is another transcendental enjoyer in this body apart from the living being who is a subordinate enjoyer there is a transcendental enjoyer he is called paramatma the super soul and uh, he is the witnesser of every action of ours and he is the sanctioner of every action both the witnesser and sanctioner he is a supreme lord he is a supreme controller he is a supreme proprietor maheshwara bharta he is a supreme enjoyer he is a supreme maintainer supreme provider therefore shri prabhu says he knows everything of our activities in every stage of our lives he knows the past present and future vedaham samatitani vartamanani charjuna bhavishyani cha bhutani krishna says in the bhagavad gita i know the past present and future of every living being and this is a fact so because he knows he rewards the reactions of our actions by placing us in some particular place so if i am in my whatever position born in a particular family with certain circumstances with certain facilities with certain amount of uh, knowledge or intelligence or wealth material knowledge i am talking of material knowledge material wealth material intelligence that is the reward of the paramatma for my past actions so shri la prabhupad gives an example a rich man gets his son born with a silver spoon in his mouth but the child who came as the rich man's son deserved such a place and therefore he is placed there by the will of the lord every one of us is spirit soul and we have got our reactions from the past so the lord places as paramatma he guides every living being every living being and particularly the human being is guided every moment for every action according to what he deserves and what he desires both are taken into account and at a particular moment when the child has to be removed from that place he is also carried by the will of the supreme even the child of the father does not wish to be separated from the happy relation so we come together in a family or in a society in a community in a workplace in a country in a foreign place even or even in heavenly planets we come together by the will of the lord according to our karma and we are separated also by the will of the lord again according to our karma the same thing happens in the case of a poor man also it's not just a rich man alone it's working it's working in everybody's case neither rich man nor poor man has any control over such meetings or separations of living beings the example of a player and his playthings should not be misunderstood narad muni is giving the example just like a player he sets up different things and according to his sweet will he sets it up and he dismantles it whenever he likes the way he likes so uh, this should not be misunderstood how to understand this example properly shila prabhupad says here one may argue that since the lord is bound to award the reactionary results of our own actions 
the example of a player cannot be applied. Because earlier Prabhupada has mentioned, according to our reactions, uh, the Lord is uh, giving us a certain, uh, placing us in a certain position. Uh, but we should not think that the Lord is completely bound up to reward each of our reactions. That is not true. Generally, the Lord will give us our reactions, which is due to us. But he may, at his own will, he may change that also. Uh, the karma mimamsa philosophy says that even if there is God, everyone will have to get their own reactions of their past actions. So the karma mimamsa philosophers say we don't have to bother about God which is a wrong philosophy. Uh, while it is true that people in general uh, get the reactions of their own past actions according to the body they have got, but still the Supreme Lord always reserves the ultimate sanction of such reactions moment to moment. And in specific cases, the Supreme Lord can change the uh, reactions which are due. Especially, Prabhupada explains that in the case of a, a devotee who has surrendered to Krishna. Uh, so, Srila Prabhupada explains how does it work in the case of a devotee. We must always remember that the Lord is a supreme will and he is not bound by any law. He is not bound by law. We are bound up. He is not bound by any law. Generally, the law of karma is that one is awarded the result of one's own actions. But in special cases, by the will of the Lord, such resultant actions are changed also. So when is it changed? This change can be affected by the will of the Lord only and no other. Only the Lord can change if he wants to, not otherwise. Therefore, the example of the player cited in this verse is quite appropriate for the supreme will. He is absolutely free to do whatever he likes. And because he is all perfect, there is no mistake in any of his actions or reactions. The Supreme Lord is the Supreme Perfect Being. Therefore, there is no question of any mistake in any of his actions. Absolutely no mistakes. These changes of resultant actions are especially rendered by the Lord. When a pure devotee is involved, see when the pure devotee is involved, the Lord is particularly uh, concerned about protecting the pure devotee in all circumstances, in all conditions, even in this material world. So, the Lord is neutral as far as non-devotees are concerned. According to the laws, the reactions are actually uh, given to each living being who is a non-devotee. But for a pure devotee, the Lord intervenes according to his own sweet will. It is assured in the Bhagavad Gita that the Lord saves a pure devotee who has surrendered unto him without reservation from all sorts of reactions of sins and there is no doubt about this. Hmm? So the Lord is able to change the reactions of one's past deeds if the person in question happens to be a pure devotee. So if he can change for a pure devotee then he himself is not bound by any laws. He himself is not bound. He is perfect and transcendent to all laws. That's the conclusion. I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.